Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. If you would like to try out HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code AmyMarion65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Remember those New Year's goals that you promised yourself you'd stick to? HelloFresh is here to help you eat better by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door, taking the hassle out of dinner time. Get HelloFresh and skip that extra trip to the grocery store and the long checkout lines. Spend more time doing the things you love with delicious chef-crafted recipes delivered to your doorstep. You can customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides or even adding proteins to a veggie dish. And now you can even upgrade for organic chicken or organic ground beef. So this month we did a little bit different take on the HelloFresh meal. So I got these meals and picked them out for Evan to make at home this weekend. So he picked up the crispy buffalo spiced chicken. That's what I'm making right here. So this is good and looks delicious. You know, mama's heart, make, you, make your son some meals. So I said, well, I'll make a dish and then you can make the rest this weekend. So he's gonna try out a couple others. He got a garlic butter, shrimp scampi, and then also mushroom and Swiss pork burgers. So he will be putting those together this weekend. It's easy. It's an easy thing to do. Like we've, you know, we've had a lot going on here. And so this is just something, just order in, have it delivered. You don't need to think about food. You don't need to just go out and eat. It's like, oh, they're delivered right to your door and you can just whip these dishes up. So I have this, I put them in little individual glass bowls here and then he'll be able to grab them and take them and head to work with them or when he gets home from work, he can eat these as well. So a good thing, a good thing, especially when you're you know, extra busy and not able to take the time to make meals. This is just a nice alternative for your food needs. So remember, go to HelloFresh.com and use that code AmyMarion65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Hope you're having a great day today. Today is Friday. Happy Friday morning to you. I hope that your morning is going well. My morning is going fantastic this morning. I am filming this a little bit differently. Um, we are going to have some things coming up here this next week and I will share with you next week. So today's video is going to be something I had filmed prior, but you still are going to get a video. I haven't done a freezer meal video in a long time, a long time, and it's nothing going to be huge. It's definitely not going to be a huge one, but I am, you know, I'm down to my <laughs> basics of what I have in my freezers and refrigerators and pantries, and we're just trying to use things up. So this week I needed to take inventory of my um, stuff and see what I had to use up because it was gonna to go to waste. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm recreating some meals and then I'm gonna freeze them for a later time and I'll be able to put those to use in a few weeks, which you'll see, you'll see in a little bit. But for now, I'm gonna use them up. So I have onions here. I have a lot, I have like four or five onions. I'm gonna chop these up because they're gonna go bad and I'm cooking some meat on my stove. I'm gonna actually just put all the onions in there and season the meat with that. And then I'm gonna get to peeling potatoes. So this is gonna be, it's a good day. It's gonna be a good day. Like I said, free, you can make all these meals and have them fresh, but I'm gonna be doing, putting them in the freezer for a later time. So it's good. So let's just chop up some onions. This is one of my favorite little <laughs> devices. One of my viewers got this for me years ago and I, I have pushed it to its limits, broke it, had to get another one. Don't overstuff it. Don't overstuff it. <laughs> It works great. I just keep the one little dice setting. I don't keep the tiny little, they come with a bunch of different pieces, but I just keep this because this is the size that I like and just chop the onions. Uniform, perfect, done. You can chop them on a cutting board. I do that as well, but today I'm in a little bit of a rush and we're just gonna do things. So just chop it here so I can get rid of the onions in my pantry so they don't go bad. Don't feel bad that you think I'm wasting all of these onions. These are onions that are getting soft. People would throw these away. So I'm just peeling off the part that yeah, there's some I'm wasting, but most people just throw the onions in the trash. So I'm actually using them and I'm gonna put them in with my meat. Okay, something else that's gonna go bad in this household are potatoes. Potatoes are not a favorite in this household at all. I don't know why. We'll eat them. The kids are getting better about eating them, but they are definitely not something that we um, run out of every month. So I'm looking at these potatoes and I was gonna, I have to make, in, I was gonna make instant mashed potatoes, but I'm like, I have potatoes. So I'm gonna just peel these 
cube them up, put them in water, I'm gonna boil them and make mashed potatoes for a couple recipes. Or for actually just one recipe for shepherd's pie. Or cottage pie, whatever you wanna call it. Again, don't feel bad if you see potato stuff on there. Um, these would normally end up in the trash. They would sit in here and I would forget about them and they would just go bad. So I just need a little bit of mashed potatoes so this is gonna work. Just put a little bit of water in here. I'm gonna let this come to a boil. Put some salt in here too. Okay, so the first dish I'm gonna make is a curry dish. This is something I enjoy using and the reason why I'm making it. Why am I making it? Because I had curry paste that had been open this week and I have to use it up or it's gonna go bad. So I'm like, okay, I can just make a bunch of curry and I'll freeze it because this will freeze easily. My sauce is gonna be, there's no exact science to, his, science, science to this, it's just how I make it. So, and it's all to taste. I add chicken broth to it. I just added chicken bouillon powder with water. And then I add curry powder to it. And then I added salt. I also add the curry paste, garlic, and sugar. And that just, and, and that tastes delicious. And then I add, I totally forgot at the end here, I added to add sweet chili sauce to it. And then I add garlic to it, stir it up till it tastes good. And if you think, okay, that tastes good. If it's too spicy, because different uh, curry paste is different spice levels. Like I usually get a green one and that's super spicy. So the sugar will, kind of counteract that, but this one is very mild, so it's not bad at all. And then, so you probably don't need as much sugar. And then I'm gonna add garbanzo beans, cause I have a lot of them, and peas. Stir it up, I'm gonna put these in Ziploc bags. These I can just heat and thaw and serve over rice. I like this, it's delicious. It's something I enjoy having. So a good way to use this up without having anything go bad. Completely forgot that I had peppers sitting up to the side here. So I had some frozen peppers and onions. I'm gonna put a little bit in here. I do like the taste of it, the flavor, just a little bit to mix in. So for my next one, it's gonna be a Chinese beef and broccoli. Why am I doing this one? Because I had a little bit of broccoli in a small bag and normally I would just serve it on the side for something. So I thought, you know, what I do, if you have a meal already prepared, like ready to go to put in the, in the crock pot, the uh, broccoli won't get eaten up for that meal. So I'm gonna just, I have um, some steak pieces here cut up. They're already, these are in the freezer, so this is still frozen. I'm just gonna add all the ingredients to the bag and just kind of mix it with my hands put the bag of broccoli inside of there. Now, when I go to serve this, I'm gonna put this in the pressure cooker with about two cups of beef broth and let the beef cook, you know, until it's done probably. It's been a little while. Low for five to six hours, I think is about the time. And then what I'm gonna do is take out some of the sauce, mix it with about two tablespoons of cornstarch, and then put it back in there, stir it in there, and then add the broccoli and cook for about a half hour. Take this out and serve it over rice. Real simple and easy. <laughs> for me, I'm trying to use up this garlic, so that's why I whip this recipe together as well, because the garlic, I could put it in a container and freeze it, but I might as well make a meal to make my life easier. I decided to put beef um, granules in here, and then all I gotta do is add two cups of water to it. That'll be easy. <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened, but my bag must have had a hole in it, so I had to transfer that to another bowl. That's good, and then um, I wrote on it. I'm like, I wrote like a an essay on it of how to make it. I'll get better. As, it's, I'm getting I'm getting back into to doing this here, so it's gonna take some time to get used to quick, you know, shorthand for the bags. Okay, my hamburger is done cooking. So what I'm gonna do is make my two dishes with hamburger. Um, I cooked about four pounds of ground beef here. One, I'm gonna make tater tot casserole and freeze it, and the other one's gonna be shepherd's pie. So for the tater tot casserole, I'm going to mix one container of cream of mushroom soup and one container of cream of chicken and then our, our dairy-free milk. These are both homemade that I made this last month to be able to make in recipes and let everybody enjoy it. So put in here, if it's still a little frozen, I might have to put the microwave for a minute just cause, you know, frozen salad cause I wasn't thinking ahead when I was making these meals. <laughs> So for this tater tot casserole, this is the way I'm gonna leave it. You Sometimes you put the tater tots and then pour the liquid on top. I like our tater tots crispy, not mushy. So this will kind of freeze all of the bottom, the meat and the, you know, the gravy part. And then when you go to let it thaw completely, take it out overnight, um, and then just put it in the oven and bake it. And you can take, you can bake it with a tin foil on for a little bit and then take it off and let it crisp up the tater tots. So this was a way for me to use up um, make some food and use up the tater tots that I need to use up this week and then have a meal that I don't have to worry about thinking about making because it's gonna be done. The next one I'm gonna make is gonna be like a, I'm gonna call it, we call it, we always call it shepherd's pie, but people call it 
cottage pie, whatever you wanna do. Basically, it's meat on the bottom with some veggies in the middle and mashed potatoes on top. So I am going to take my meat here, I'm gonna put a little bit of beef bouillon in there just for a little bit more flavor, and then two of my homemade cream of mushroom soups in here. Stir it up, if it's frozen, I might put it on the stove for a few minutes to thaw it. Put it in a pan, and then we're gonna put some a little bit of veggies on top, I'm gonna to whip up my mashed potatoes as well. So I thawed this soup in here, and just add a little pepper to this, and just gonna put it in the bottom of a pan. Okay, so I gotta make some potatoes here. Now, I need potatoes for two recipes. These potatoes are not gonna stretch for two recipes. I also don't have sour cream. So, we're gonna have to get a little creative here with what we have, because we're gonna have to use this up. So I'm gonna smash these as best I can. Put a little bit of butter here and a little bit of um, dairy-free milk. Stir it up, see how it does. I'm thinking to make a little bit of instant potatoes. And um, again, making it as best as I can, <laughs> because we're just kind of gathering things up here. So let's make the potatoes and see how these do the real ones. Okay, so then I just added a cup of milk to that. Usually you can add sour cream. I'm not going to because, you know, I don't have it. So I'm just gonna combine these two together so you get real and fake. Yeah, I find that was a great gather fragment mixture of real potatoes and instant potatoes. So I'm just gonna spread, I'm gonna put some veggies on top of this and then I'm gonna spread some mashed potatoes, about half of this because I need half for another recipe. This is great, you can put cheese on this if you want. We're skipping the cheese for the dairy-free kits. This recipe, I don't even know what this is gonna be called. It's basically like it tastes like Thanksgiving casserole. Um, yeah, that's what I'll call it. So I'm gonna take some chicken. This is already cooked chicken that I had in my freezer. I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning on top. And then I'm going to put some, a stuffing mix on it. And then I'm going to, do I put mashed potatoes? Let me think how I'm gonna do this. Then I'll put the gravy mixture and then I'll put mashed potatoes on top and then freeze it. It's gonna be, it's delicious, easy. I think back in the day it used to be taste like Thanksgiving casserole and used to put all the leftovers from Thanksgiving into a casserole dish. But this, I'm gonna do it just a little bit different. It's good. So I'm putting the chicken here. I just kind of chopped some up. I'm using more for other recipes, so I was kind of just eyeballing it. How much chicken do I want in the bottom? And then I'm gonna add a box of stuffing mix right on top, just pour it right on top. And then in a separate bowl, I'm gonna mix up my gravy. And it's basically cream of chicken soup, two cans. It's all homemade. I'm gonna add some milk to it, make it a little bit more watery, a little bit of chicken bouillon because um, I'm gonna just flavor a little bit more to pour over top of this, and then that will make a nice gravy when we go to bake it. Always taste your food. If it tastes good, it's good. Sometimes when you reheat things, if you don't add enough liquid, it's gonna be dry. So all you have to do, like, especially for like one of these casserole dishes, just pour some chicken broth over top, like of this. If you go to baking, it's like just not, and it's super dry, like you did not add enough stuff, add chicken broth to it. Same thing with like your beef, um, Shepherd's pie, if it's real, it shouldn't be dry because it's got the hamburger in it, but tater shot casserole, let's use that. If it's too dry, just add a little bit of broth and water and pour it over top. It will help it hugely. Okay, the next recipe I'm gonna do is something we had this last week and it was simple and good. And again, I'm putting it together because I have just like a few ingredients in my pantry and I'm using them up so that I know I've got a meal. So that's, that's the only reason I'm doing this. So this was chicken orzo skillet. Hopefully I make it the same way. I will let you know. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to say what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put some chicken in um, the bag here and then I'm going to add some garlic. I'm going to add spinach and I'm going to add um, diced tomatoes and I'm trying to think anything else and a little bit of crushed red pepper, Italian seasoning to it. And then I'm going to add some chicken bouillon. Now, I'm gonna put my orzo in here. I'm gonna put two cups of orzo in here. Not add any liquid to this. I'm gonna freeze this the way it is. When I go to eat it, I will take it out. Oh, it's not gonna take that long to thaw. Put it in a skillet or put it in the slow cooker and then add in three cups of water. That will make my broth. The orzo will absorb. It'll be good. It's easier to do it that way versus like, you can cook your orzo like in rice, stuff like that. But sometimes it just makes it um, just a little smushy. So I always like to cook it right then. So put it all in a bag. I keep moving on. I have a lot of the sausage, a lot of kielbasa, a ton of kielbasa. So I'm gonna chop some up and we're gonna make a jambalaya with part of it. So let's just chop the sausage. Okay. 
okay, I was just sitting here and I'm like, you know what? Once you start making freezer meals, you start looking and you're like, there's so many more I can keep doing. So I keep checking for ingredients. And I'm like, okay, I got more to make some more. So I'm gonna chop up one more package of this because I'm gonna make some more recipes with it. The first one I'm gonna do here is jambalaya. J jambalaya, not jambalaya, jambalaya. Now again, this is completely different. I know it is, I know it is. I am doing a version of how we had it given to us one time because it works. The only thing I'm thinking I would rather do that I didn't is cut the kielbasa smaller. That's okay, I do like to like put it in quarters, like each circle. I just don't feel like chopping it today. So I'm gonna just put in the bag some chicken, the sausage, and then I'm gonna add a little handful of peppers here. They're already chopped up. They're, they're more like fajita, that's okay. I could chop them, but I'm not going to. And then um, a little bit of garlic, because I'm trying to use up this garlic. And then I'm gonna add Cajun seasoning, a can of diced tomatoes, and then what I'm gonna add to it is, um, actually, you know what? It's not diced tomatoes. I don't have any diced tomatoes. All I have is tomato sauce. So use what you can. I will add tomato sauce, it's gonna work. It's, you do what you can do. And then I'm gonna add my rice and just seal it. And then when I go to cook it, I will put three cups of water in there and then it will just cook that rice nice. So this is the way we do it. It's easy, yummy, delicious, everybody likes it. The next one I'm gonna do is sausage, red beans, and rice. This is again simple, it's going to be the sausage. I'm gonna put some of the peppers in there. The garlic, I added water to the garlic to use it up, so that's why it's real liquidy. And then um, tomato sauce. And then what I'm gonna do is put in two cans of chili beans to it. That's it, this is easy. You just heat it up and then serve it over rice. Next dish, you might just laugh and you'd be like, why are you putting this together? Because I already have the sausage cut up. That's why I'm putting it together. Sausage and pierogies. This is very simple, very simple. I will just put this in a bag and then I'm gonna pour it into a greased um, crock pot when I go to have it or in a casserole dish. Either way and bake it. It's a favorite. We love it. It's simple. They just, the kids do different. They do like the crunch topping, the dip it in or, you know, whatever you want to have. But everybody likes it. It's an easy dish. I had pierogies to use up, so I put them in here with the sausage. That's one of those dishes where you can just call and say, hey, grab the pierogi looking bag out of the freezer and put it in the, in the um, slow cooker or in the casserole dish and bake it for the little kids. It's just easy to do. This next dish is real simple. It's called Jared's casserole. It's Jared, I don't know. There was a guy that Greg worked with one time. His name was Jared. He brought a dish and it was really good. It probably is not even close to this, but this is how we made it. And it's basically like spaghetti sauce and Alfredo mixed together, like a pink sauce. And it's delicious. We like it. It's simple with, I'm gonna mix the ingredients here. So I don't have any tomato sauce or diced tomatoes left at all. So all I have is spaghetti sauce. So I'm gonna add um, equal spaghetti sauce and the Alfredo. I'm gonna put a little bit of peppers in here and then the rest of the um, sausage, or most of the sausage, and then I'm going to just put a little Italian seasoning in it and then um, that'll freeze it. We go to cook, to serve it, it will be, we'll cook some bow tie pasta and then serve it with it. It's easy and delicious. Okay, since we're gathering fragments, we're making some freezer meals. One thing I have a lot of, I know it's bad, is eggs, is eggs. I know, and nobody else has eggs. I got a lot when I went to the discount store and we have not used them up. So in order for them not to go bad, I could freeze them individually, but I feel like the eggs will definitely go down in price and we'll be able to get eggs again. So I'm gonna make a bunch of breakfast burritos because I have a ton of tortillas. So the bad thing is the kids really like just the sausage crumbles in it, which I do not have a ton of. I have one little package here of sausage links. So I'm gonna try to do my best to mock the flavor by taking the sausage, putting it in the food processor. I have a little thing of ham that was in the freezer. I'm gonna try to grind that up too, and then some bacon. Grind it up to have a little mixture of meat. Hopefully I can, you know, pass that off as just the sausage, we'll see. And then I'm gonna crack a bunch of eggs, cook a bunch of eggs, mix it together. I'm gonna leave some out with no cheese and then some with cheese. Okay, I feel like I can pass that off as just the Bur breakfast crumbles, <laughs> let's hope. Or it's an awful lot of burritos not getting eaten.
<laughs> okay, I started stirring this in and I'm like, you know what? I can add way more eggs. So I'm gonna do the other part of eggs because I have a lot of eggs. I gotta do something with them, they're gonna go to waste. I know, that's terrible. Finally got the other pan of eggs cooked, so put this in here. That's a good mixture in there. So I'm gonna just, sometimes it's good if you don't have the wax paper sheets, but I do. Just take them and put them on a cookie sheet and then flash freeze them, it's called, until they're solid, and then take them and put them in Ziploc bags. I like to put them in the wax paper sheets because when we reheat these from a frozen state or from where, if, and you just put them in the refrigerator, it's good just to keep them right in the wrapper and heat them for a minute 30 in the microwave, and that's it. The wrapper keeps them, um, the steam in there so they stay moist. This is good, so I am gonna make a bunch here that are dairy free, cheese free, basically cheese free for um, Jensen and Jaden if they want some, I'm gonna put them in a bag and label them. And then the rest, I'll put cheese in the mixture and then mix them up. And since we're all about gathering fragments, I've got a bunch of miscellaneous cheese packages that I'm gonna pour in here and just stir it up. This was a great way for me to use up all, a lot of these eggs. And then I was, the tortillas are gonna go bad too. So again, something I needed to use up and then I started making these and I'm like, <gasps> I'm totally out, so I had to go get, I had one more package in there and there were tiny ones, but I only was able to do a few and then I had two more, so I used, I didn't show it, but two of those ones that look like a bowl, you know, like the cup, the cup tortilla. So I was able to put two in there. So it's good. So we have a lot of breakfast burritos. So some are wrapped, some are gonna be flash frozen. It just depends, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you do it, however you wanna make it, they both turn out exactly the same. So this was a good way to gather them up not put anything to waste so awesome oh my goodness what a great day today i got so much done this was again using things up that were gonna go to waste so there is always something you can throw together and make food from and if you find that you have a lot that's gonna go bad like my potatoes were gonna go bad all these eggs were gonna go bad all these tortillas and you know i had opened a big can of chickpeas and i'm like what am i gonna do with all this stuff and you can always kind of gather things up and create some meals. So I intended on having like four or five meals. And then like, as I started going, I'm like, wait a minute, there's like this, there's this, there's this. So I came up with a whole slew of them and now I have a nice variety of meals. So I've came up with about 11 different meals for our family, which is awesome. This is really, really good. And then we have all these breakfast burritos. So this was a great freezer making day. I told you I wasn't gonna do freezer making days. I'm sorry, I did. <laughs> I am, sometimes I am, just not, probably not the extreme I used to do, but this will be nice to have in the freezer for the next few weeks because we have a lot going on and I think that they're gonna come in handy over the next course of a while here as I'm having life and doing different activities, so awesome. Okay, so today's done. I am done with today's video, so I thank you guys for watching always. Thank you for watching through the sponsorships, supporting my channel, watching through the ads, all those things that also help support my family and what we do here, so I thank you for that. So I hope you have a fantastic, I'm talking the fantastic best rest of your weekend, and I will see you guys again on Monday with another video. All right, see you Monday, bye.